we need to finish up what Lance, the 10 things. We've only been to the third thing so far. Right, let, me, let, me, let, me hit, let me hit this real quick. The big key is going to be the unity in the church. This is before his election. The unity in the church and its agreement together will determine his success. Do you know the reason why Donald Trump was a shock, uh, Jim and Lori, to everyone, to pollsters, because they, there was a category of Christian they had not taken count of. And it's ir ironic because it's the category, it's your demographic. Mm -hmm. They had a category for evangelical, but a lot of them were in going to church, listening to pastors that weren't educating them, so they didn't know what to do. They had a category called born again, but a lot of them are so spiritual they aren't even registered to vote. They just wanted to see signs and wonders. <laughs> they had, so they figured they had everybody predicted. Suddenly, 23 million people felt uneasy and went out. They did not coordinate with each other. It's one of the greatest sovereign moves of God in American electoral history. 23 million w felt uneasy. They had to go out. Yeah. Wow. They didn't know what to do, but they knew they didn't want Clinton. And they weren't sure about Trump, but they felt they had heard enough to believe that he might be a change, an outsider. And they pulled the lever. 88%, never has it been, mm -hmm. that 88% of 23 million people who never talk to each other all agree on the same thing at the same time. Yeah. And they pulled the lever. George Barna did research on it, post-election forensics. And he said, this is the category they missed. Sage Khan, spiritually active, governmentally engaged, conservative thinkers. In other words, spiritually active and governmentally engaged. <laughs> the sage con actually became the new category. They're, uh, they're our demographic. They're an aging demographic. But uh, we yes. came along, as you guys remember the journey, I was all excited when I heard Jimmy Carter's born again. I started getting excited about, oh, we got a born again president. Because when I got born again, I figured a born again president, man, well, this, is, this is wonderful. Well, he did prove to be the best news possible for born again or for Christians at that time. Then, uh, then uh, when Reagan came along, the church became, God started to get mature. We started showing up and supporting candidates. And when we showed up, we created a whole new power line in terms of shaping and discipling the nation. The problem is Christians show up uh, capriciously. We show up when we're nervous, and then we don't show up later. Like right now, a whole lot of people are saying, well, do you think, think Donald Trump's going to be able to make it to 20, you know, 2020? And I say, man, it's like people don't get it. The next presidential election is happening in six months, seven months. It's called the midterms. That's it. Because the Senate and the Congress right now is in the hands of Republicans. They may not love Trump, but at least they're in, they, they know their future is tied to not sabotaging him. On the other hand, if there's an overturning of the Senate and Congress, the agenda is to impeach this president and divide the nation. They don't care, to your point, what they do to him. Can you imagine ripping off the will of 60 million Americans in an electoral process because you are so full of hate that you will literally fabricate accusations, take someone to court and try them on it. So the midterms are coming up and you better be, you better be as awake about what's happening in, the ne in November of this year as we were before November when these things were written because these prophecies are contingent upon, upon this. Agreement and unity in the church is what's going to help this Cyrus do everything he's anointed to do.